Hey, what is up YouTube? Colst here and we are back with the second card review and we're trying to go really fast because I'm supposed to go to sleep in like an hour and we have like eight more or nine more card reviews to do. So we're going to go really, really fast. Uh -huh. Okay, but seriously, let's um, get going. We are doing Demon Hunter. So the first card we have here is Red Card. The one mana epic or spell and it makes a minion go dormant for two turns. So it is basically the battle cry of Maev, if you remember Maev. Maev at the time was an insanely good legendary. Actually, this is, I would say, better than Maev because the fact that it was a, you basically had to pay for a three mana four three for the effect. But this, you just get the spell and then you have the rest of your mana to do whatever you want. So it's, uh, I, I would rate this like a very high light card because it's in Demon Hunter, you're expecting that you want to be aggressive anyway, right? Yeah, I can't keep up that fast talking though. But so I would rate this like, I rate this very highly. We're doing our scale, by the way. I'm not going to explain this in every review, but we're basically doing off pick rate. And I would pick this very highly because, partially because it's an epic and you just don't expect it offered many of them. I would prioritize this very highly personally. So I might say this is even like a four out of five potentially. It's not a card you would want to have four of but you would really like to have one. So you just value the first one really, really highly, basically. And because this thing's, it's kind of like a freeze for two turns, if you think about it, but also it silence. It's like a, for the duration of freeze, it also silences for the purposes of like removing taunt from a big minion, for example, right? So it can be very, very useful. Compared to sap, it's like, Sometimes it's better, but sometimes it's worse. If you're sapping a taunt, they just replay the taunt and then you're just screwed, right? But with this thing, they actually can't replay it because it's dormant, right? So there are ways you can synergize it with dormant as well in this class. So yeah, I mean, I think this is a really, really good card. I would definitely prioritize, especially the first one really highly. Next up is Blind Box, two mana, get two random demons, outcast, discover them instead. So the one thing to keep in mind, at least currently in Arena, there are not a lot of neutral demons, but that could change. We don't know what cards are going to be in. Um, so that's always a problem, is that dilution from neutrals can really ruin a card like this, just depending on what the just what the card pool actually is. However, if you can outcast, it mitigates it a lot, because then you can discover, so you get around that for a while. So... This is a really hard card to rate, honestly, just because it's so dependent on what the card pool is. It could be, this could be one of the best cards in the class and it could also be pretty bad, right? Just depending on what the card pool is. So honestly, I mean, I don't want to give like too many like cop out ones, like, but like you literally cannot rate this card without knowing what the card pool is. <laughs> you, you just straight up can't. It's like, it's probably going to be decent, but you just cannot know without knowing what the card pool is. <laughs> it, it could be very good and it could be pretty mediocre but you really just don't know next up is lesser opal spellstone two mana draw one card attack with your hero two times to upgrade there are certain synergies which we'll talk about pretty soon i mean i could talk about it right now actually this is spirit of the team like there's certain ways that you can actually like trigger your attacks without even having to hero power so there are, there are things like this, but um, obviously you can also just keep hero powering and then you do this. Um, thing about this though, it's a little weird is that, I mean, this can be very awkward with the outcast mechanic and stuff. Yeah, and you have other ways to draw that are less awkward. Like you can only, usually you can only attack once per turn. So it's like, you have to like actually attack a lot it's just and it's really like two mana draw two is just not good in demon hunter because you have so many ways to do that so you need to for this to actually be good you need to make it draw three but then you're waiting four turns and then if this thing's in a weird slot in your hand it's screwing all your outcasts up so it's pretty awkward i think it's probably not like if you if you're late in the draft and you need draw you'll totally take it but You'd really rather not take a card like this, I think. Especially with how like recent Demon Hunters play, where you just have other ways to draw and outcast is actually important. So you might still say this is maybe it might still be a two out of five on our scale, but like I don't know. It it might even be worse actually. But 
Like, draw is never going to be completely unpickable, but, you know, it's probably not a card you want. Next up, Spirit of the Team. Two mana, zero, three, undead, stealth for one turn. Your hero has plus two attack on your turn. So, you know, you play this, you can attack for two. The next turn, it unstealths, you can attack for two again. Assuming it didn't die, but you assume a stealth doesn't die immediately, it, all, unless it gets AoE'd, obviously. But then it's very vulnerable, and then it probably dies for free. But you got to deal four damage at least. The problem is, is that, I mean, you dealt four damage, but it's also, you took a lot of damage if you're actually hitting minions with this. It can be nice to go face, but, and it can be nice to trigger some of these potential attack synergies. But as a standalone card, it just doesn't seem that useful, right? Because even on, I mean, sometimes it's good on curve, but like, you wouldn't really feel that great about using it unless you unless you happen to be able to eat a one drop with it. If you eat a one drop, then it's fine. But otherwise, it's like eh, it's a little inconsistent. I mean, it's definitely pickable. But I'd probably just say like a two out of five. I can't say I would prioritize it super highly. You'd rather just take something a little bit more consistent about what you're trying to do most of the time, I think. Unless the synergy is really valuable, but I think it's a standalone card. Just wouldn't like it that much. Next up is Umpire's Grasp. 3 mana, 3, 2 with weapon with death rattle. Draw a demon and reduce its cost by 1 or by 2. Um, you have to have a demon. It'd be nice if you can manage eat out a big demon. So it's nice. I mean, it's just a very, assuming you can actually draw a demon, assuming you have like literally any demon, even if it's a one drop and you waste half the buff, it's still reasonably efficient, right? A three mana, three, two weapons, okay. Not great, but it's okay. And it helps you trigger again, attack with phase synergies and it can go phase. You can use hero power to make its damage more flexible. It's a pretty reasonable card. Like I like this more than like a four two weapon, a four mana four two weapon in this class. I think it's just a little more easier to use, and breakpoints are more likely to work out well. So I think it's good. Like as long as you just have something to draw, it's a good card. If you don't have any demons, it's bad. But you still you just wouldn't want it just for a three two in nowadays. But assuming you're getting value out of the draw, it seems nice. So. I don't know, what would you rate that as? Like, is that good enough to say it's like... Hmm, 3, 3.5, something like that probably, I'd say. Probably. Next up is Ball Hog. This card seems really good because it's a 4 mana 3, 3 Quill Bore with Life Steal, Battle Cry, and Death Rattle deal 3 damage to lowest health enemy. I didn't realize it was actually lowest health enemy. That was random, to be honest. Um. Yeah, so it's going to snipe whatever you want to snipe with it, probably. And so there still can be some RNG if they have multiple hit things with the same health, but it is pretty controllable compared to something that's potentially random. And because of a lot of this other synergy you have, first of all, lowest health enemy could be face, could be the enemy hero, right? You could kill them with this, but also it's a life steal. So you're healing a lot. And because of all this other stuff that's trying to force you to actually hit stuff with your face, it's very nice to have this that heals you, right? So the healing goes way up in value compared to where it should be or where it normally even would be, I think, in this class. So honestly, I think this is just like a five-star card <laughs> in uh, Demon Hunter just because it's going to be so good at what it needs to be, I think. So... Yeah, because like compared to the Sarian, like it's really nice to have Reborn, but you, you guys all know how much the Sarian just goes gets wasted on face, right? And this thing just isn't going to, so. Five might be a little generous, but I don't know. I think it's just going to be what you're going to want, you know? Like, it's, it's just so good. So. You're just going to want to pick it. A lot. I don't know, honestly, like maybe on my rating scale, I mean... It might be more like a four because i think it's better than watcher though like so maybe like 4.5 is probably the more reasonable thing <laughs> it's probably a 4.5 to be honest but yeah it's just you're gonna pick it a lot it's really good next up how do you say the syzygy four mana four three legendary 
Death Rattle, get three random first edition Demon Hunter cards, mint condition. So what that means is, is that these are like the pre-nerf Death Knight cards or Demon Hunter cards. The ones that literally existed, um, oh, CCG. Okay, I see. Yeah, these are the cards that were on release and they were all completely broken, right? Like, uh, if you were around in Demon Hunter release, you know how they are. But um, a lot of those cards, honestly, are not even like that standout by modern standards, probably. But they're still really good because, I mean, they were really, really broken at the time, right? They were completely ridiculous. And you're just getting a lot of value of good cards with this, right? So... It's a four mana four or three, but it seems well worth it for what you're going to get. They're not going to be like, because yeah, that's the thing is like, I, I don't have an easy way to pull up the examples, but like one of them's like a five mana six, four, or if, is it six, four or six, five that it's like, if you have attacked, you deal for. They're just kind of cards now, right? Like they'd be like above average cards, probably like all the things you're getting are probably going to be like. It was a 7-4, really? Oh, God. They printed that? <laughs> They'd all be like three to four. Most of them would be like three to four star cards, right? I think. There's a couple ones. Like, you get like Twin Slice, right? So, I don't know. I mean, you're getting good cards. Four mana, four, three to draw three good cards. It, it's, it seems nice. Um... What would you actually rate this? It's a legendary. Like, I mean, if it wasn't a legendary, like if you're rating against other cards, it would be like at least a 4.5, probably, maybe even a 5. Um, It's going to be harder to pick it. Oh, zero mana, twin slice. Oh, my God. Wait, these cards are insane. Oh, no. I'm not sure if I can quite give this a 5. I mean, it's, it's definitely at least a 4. It's probably, yeah, it should be better than Snake Eyes for sure, because you're getting three cards instead of two. The body is not that much worse. I think it's like way better than Snake Eyes. It's slow, but it's like, I mean, you're getting cards that'll make up for it. I think it's okay. Cause it's like, it's on a, you still do have to play a four mana four three. It could get silenced. That's the problem. Yeah, you probably, I don't think you can give it a five. You probably, I guess we'll say it's like a four, maybe a 4.5. They're just barely, I think they're still good. I looked at what they are. They're still good. Like, they're still above average cards, I think. But they're not, like, broken anymore. Next up, Workshop Mishap. Four mana fell spell. Deal five damage to a minion. Excess damages both neighbors. Outcast gain life still. Um, so this is a thing where it's like... Isn't this, like... I mean, this is very similar to... I mean, it literally is combustion, right? It's just, it's one extra mana, one extra damage. <laughs> it completely um, punishes people who just aren't thinking about this card. This is like one of those cards you actually will just absolutely have to think about, especially with lifesteal. I mean, the amount of punish you can get up from this is insane, right? But it heals up to nine, right? Because it would only deal like one and then four and four. That's how it works, right? Or does it actually... Or does it, in that case, does it heal for you for 9 or does it heal you for 13? Does it give you the 5 on the primary target no matter what? Or does it only deal 1 damage? I wonder how that works. You only get 9, so it only gives you the 1 damage. I think that might be right. Anyway, I mean, regardless, it's still a lot of healing. We were talking about how good healing is. Um, it's going to be a weird card just because it relies on your opponent actually playing into it. Otherwise, it just doesn't really do that much. And you're not always going to have life still. So objectively, I mean, I don't think I can rate this super highly, right? Like I said, like this is a 4.5. Is it better than that? Might not be. I mean, it's still definitely good, right? It'd be better if I could go face. <laughs> Doesn't come with a body. You can't get like repetitive life steal, but it's a lot of potential burst healing sometimes, right? If you were really desperate, you could hit your own board to heal for 13. If you had a bunch of one ones or something. Probably just. I don't know, even rating it like a four seems 
I don't know. Four might be okay. It might be like a 3.5. It's like a 3.5 to a four, probably. Cause I think it's just good because it's poten it's removal and potential healing. I'd probably go more like a 3.5, probably. Do I have a five plus? I mean, anything like that just goes to a five. I could arbitrarily say it's a six, but. <laughs> Window shoppers, the next card we have here. Five mana six five demon. With a miniaturized battle cry discover a demon set its stats and cost to this minions. Um, it's a weird one. Again, it's like really hard to know just because we don't know what the demon pool is going to be. <laughs> uh there's probably going to be big things to hit. It's a little bit weird because you know there are certain things that are going to be. The two different discoveries, you're looking for different things, right? Like, there are certain things you can get that get a lot better if you make it a 5 mana 6 5. Maybe some small minions or some big minions that you get to discount, right? Or some small minions you get to make much bigger. But then there are other things where if it has a really powerful, like, Valkyrie effect or something, then you can make it really good if you just make it mini so you can trigger it whenever you want. So it's probably safe to say again, it's like is not knowing the demon pool. The demon pool is not consistent to have like really good hits in it. It's really hard to just say without knowing that, but like it's hard to imagine this card could be bad. Cause as compared to the other one where it's like a two mana, two mana and it might be random, you might not be able to even discover them. This thing gets, does it attached to a bunch of stats that are pretty efficient at the same time and there's potential for mana cheat and stuff. Like it's hard to imagine this could be bad, <laughs> right? So probably just say it's like likely to be a four out of five. It might even be like in the right, with the right card pool, it could even be like a five, but that's the thing. It's like, we just don't quite know. There's a possibility there could be a really small demon pool that could just have really broken things, right? Probably not going to happen, but it could be completely broken. But it's probably just going to be like good or really good somewhere in that range. So just say it's like a four, I think. Last up, we have Magatheridon unreleased. So this is all like a CCG stuff. <laughs> 8 mana, 12, 12, dormant for 2 turns. Mechana Demon. While dormant, deal 3 damage to all enemies at the end of your turn. So you could potentially red card this to just keep dealing damage. Which your opponent can't deny, by the way. Because um, you could just play this, and then even if they have a removal for it, they can't remove it while it's dormant unless they have Reno or something. Or Twisting Nether now. But... Once it pops, you could just red card it again. So then that's 12 damage to all enemies they can't do anything about. You could just kill them like that. There would be actual times you would do that. Oh, now there's only locations? It's not... Oh, okay. Why do they have that be different? <laughs> okay. Fine. Uh, never, never mind on that point then. But anyway... That's a little weird because it's like, I mean, it seems good, right? It's probably good. I mean, it's slow the turn you play it, but I mean, you only get to, I mean, I'm, I'm like assuming it goes off four times. If you do, if it only does twice, I don't know. It's all like a one side hellfire. It's just like a four mana card. You get another one. It's like another four mana card and then you get a 12, 12. It's a lot overall. Like it's a lot of value, but it is like somewhat, it's somewhat slow still. I mean, because when it pops, it obviously can't attack immediately. It seems good, right? It's a it's a it's a good card because it's like it's a big card that your opponent also can't turn a dormant to counter it. Really, <laughs> that's the other thing. <laughs> I mean, they can. They would only take one hit of it at that point. I don't know, it's a big card that has like some form of initiative that at least you can set up to make it playable, right? So it's like, it seems fine. I'm guessing the meta would be reasonably slow and then it, this would just be a lot of value, although then it wouldn't be that great, but it's probably fine. You wouldn't want to rely on it too much though. I don't think it's like amazing card though. <laughs> so I don't know. On our scale, it's like, I mean, it would probably be like a four 
is a legendary if you're rating on legendary scale legendary scale would be even harder just because like legendaries you know are harder to pick it like it would probably be more like a three as a legendary like i mean i would take this over like a baron getting right i would think like pretty easily like i would take it over a baron getting but a baron getting would be like you know is like the card is like an okay legendary right it's, it's like way better than baron getting so yeah, it's like somewhere in between a Berengen and something really broken. It's probably like halfway in the middle. So with that, anyway, let me know what you guys think on YouTube. Appreciate you guys all hanging out. We are going to jump into the next review now. We're here on Twitch. See you guys later. Peace out.